Hello folks, I just <clears throat> have been uh, motivated to uh, make a video by recent events in Australia. Um, ben Robert Smith, our most decorated soldier. Basically, committed war crimes and was awarded the Victoria Cross. Some of the evidence that's now coming out is absolutely damning. 95 year old patients of a nursing home just down the road from me in my nearest big town murdered by the police force with tasers for advancing towards them carrying a butter knife with their walking frame. Hundreds and hundreds of people attacked. Old people, families, myself by thugs in body armour carrying assault rifles grenade launchers batons rubber bullets I've seen snipers on the roofs of government buildings at protests. I've had assault rifles shoved in my face. I've had police, fully armed police, hands on tasers, come round my home to intimidate me. All this cowardice by our security forces is symptomatic of have you ever read the book Lord of the Flies I think most people in Australia think it's about a bunch of young men who get marooned on a tropical island they miss the point what have we turned into Australia? Attacking and beating old men and women, gassing them and then laughing. This is what our police force has turned into. This is what we have turned into because we sat back and acquiesced to a tyrannical regime. Now, I say this not out of any egotistical bent, but I don't have Victoria Cross. I have this. And most people wouldn't believe me if I told them what was required to earn this. It's the point I'm making is honour and integrity are all important and they are what's missing. Now, just look back over the last three years what's happened to people who just wanted bodily integrity. Christians singing the national anthem. I witnessed so much violence towards them. I don't know where Australia is going, but the notions of a fair go, 
the Anzac spirit. Uh, and mateship, they just don't exist anymore. I served as a combat medic for many years and saved many lives. I served as a firefighter in the Australian, in the Australian Capital Territory. I served as a teacher at the Canberra Institute of Technology. I served as a manager at the YMCA, teaching children gymnastics and other life skills, including survival and living in the mountains on the Pioneer Camp Program. I developed programs for older adults that changed lives. I'm a published author, four books and hundreds of educational texts. What do I see? I don't see the Australia I came to in 1986. I see an Australia run by thugs, criminals and people with no integrity. I lost my own precious son. They took him away. They wouldn't let me even stay with him. first vaccine he had a massive seizure they insisted and mandated he have a second one <laughs> and he died of a massive hemorrhagic stroke this is not the Australia That, that you all profess it to be. You don't see it. I see it. My friends see it. This nation is giving the world's highest award for courage to a war criminal. Nobody says a thing. <laughs> this nation, 95% of it, has stood and clapped and cheered as cookers, as people like to call them, were attacked by cowards. They were burnt by long range audio devices and gassed and beaten again. Who said Dickie Bird? When one hundreds and thousands of people turned up in Canberra to peaceful protests, the media got on board the government line and said there was 10,000 people. It's just not true. I asked a TV crew politely to come and film what was happening to people, families with children and old folk. I said, Cook, turn your cameras round and film what's going on over there. Those people being attacked. They walked away and filmed what they thought was a good shot of some hippies sat round talking about peace.
people, my own aid station, I went down under the Red Cross to help anyone that might have got hurt in the protests. The stormtroopers marched through, literally marched through and kicked it all down the road and told me to fuck off and get out of it. They trampled people. They trashed everyone's possessions. Tents, camping equipment wasn't just taken down. It was broken over knees. They attempted to confiscate vehicles until the tow truck drivers refused to do it. What are you, Australia? What have you become? What are the Anzacs doing now? I earned this. And it was bloody hard. Hard. Three years of totally brutal work. But I have only ever served people. I have acted with honour. I have saved lives. Many. I've even, even had to, unfortunately, take a life. Come on, Australia. Wake up. It's people like your government. Very few politicians are saying anything, just a few stalwarts, much as in Britain. Start to resist. When tyranny becomes law, resistance becomes obligatory. We can't allow this to continue. People are dying. Your excess death rate, non-COVID, is up to 20% up on the five-year average. 30,000 people died last year. Extra. What are you doing? I'm not saying I can prove what it is, but you won't even consider it. All those people, all those families lost somebody, including me, and I can't even talk about it. Unless there's a big turnaround. You are lost. <laughs> I just live here with my, with my whippets and my memories of my son. I'm a thorn in the side of many people, including the police and local government. Because I've seen too much. I've seen too much in my life. A long career in the military. As a combat medic and as a sergeant instructor. In the most elite corps in the British Army. I've seen enough. This needs to stop. Otherwise, Australia, I'm afraid you're lost and you'll soon be seeing the onset of tyranny, central bank digital currencies, etc. Goodbye. On this occasion, I will continue to resist.